Hey guys, so today we are continuing our journey with Rob, a financial literacy teacher and author of the children's book, M is for Money. If you didn't catch the last video in this series, head on over to Self-Publishing with Dale to check out the process we went through to find the perfect narrator for the book on Fiverr. Today we're going to be uploading the audiobook and hitting publish so that we can distribute wide for audio. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm MK Williams. I'm an author and independent publisher. I love sharing my insights about all things self-publishing with you. Before I get into the details of today's video, don't forget to hit subscribe. That way you can be here every week when I release new videos on self-publishing, making a career out of being an author, and now being a mompreneur. Okay, so without any further delay, let's jump into our session where we were with Rob recording and actually getting the audio files uploaded for Rob onto ACX and Findaway Voices. All right. Well, we will get started with getting the audiobook uploaded. So um, last time we were all together, we were finalizing that we picked Brad as our narrator uh, for M is for Money. He did a great voice for Stash the Squirrel, as well as a great just main narration voice. So he had the best blend. Um, and so what's kind of happened in the interim? Because um, in video release time, this seems like, oh, this just happened. Um, so in the interim, <laughs> Rob finished the book, working with the illustrator, uh, launched his Kickstarter, closed his Kickstarter, fulfilled his Kickstarter. And so that was a big thing that the final domino that needed to fall before we could do this part of uploading the audiobook was making sure that all the Kickstarters had their rewards. Yeah. Because in order to claim the book on ACX, Audiobook Creation Exchange, which is owned by Amazon, the ebook has to be available for sale in the Kindle store fun fact. So we couldn't necessarily list the ebook for pre-order until we had obviously a final interior and all of the Kickstarters had the rewards. Um, now I was going over this with Rob last week. I was like, we're going to put the ebook on pre-order. You're not going to tell anybody. So no one's going to know it's on pre-order. <laughs> but on the off chance that one of the very enthusiastic supporters of the Kickstarter went to see that and they were like, hey, what gives? I don't have my stuff. We didn't want to do that until all of those were sent out. So um, as of last week, the book is on pre-order. So that's exciting. Um, so right now, I'm actually going to share my screen and we're going to go through the steps to get the book onto ACX first. Um, and then we're going to do Find Away Voices because we want to go out beyond just the Amazon ecosystem. All right. So let me go ahead and hit share. Read more about it and going wide. <laughs> yes, exactly. So I am logged into Rob's ACX. Now I will give a disclaimer here. Like I am Rob's coach and he has compensated me to make sure this part gets done. So he's on the call kind of seeing what I would be doing behind the scenes where usually he'd be like, here, you do all the work. Um, here you go. So I would say anytime you're working with somebody to help you with this part of the upload process, um, you can use either a password um, manager system like LastPass or something like that if you don't feel comfortable giving out passwords. Or you can change your password while that person's in there and then change it back to something more personal later that you can remember. Fortunately, Amazon has a single sign-on. So when I helped Rob get the ebook uploaded last week and I had that password, it also gets me into ACX. So this was pretty easy to do this today. Um, and again, be careful who you trust with your passwords. Okay, little disclaimer done. So this is Rob's um, instance of ACX. Um, so we are going to go ahead and log in. Um, and right now it's a zero, no sales, no nothing, no no, nothing in production. This is going to be his first audiobook. So we want to click assert more titles, which is effectively Rob saying, hey, I have a book. Um, now, what ACX automatically does is it's showing results for Rob Phelan, which is your name. Um, your book's not showing up at first because I hate to break this to you, Rob. Your name is actually fairly common. <laughs> um, so I don't, we are own, I don't own the SEO for my own name yet. It's kind of sad, but someday I will. I will be the first person to show up when they search my name. Yes, that that's a good goal. That's a good goal. Okay, Attaboy. so I'm gonna nice. I'm gonna add an M is for money, and then I'm gonna hit search again. And what do you know? This is my book. This is Rob's book. So we're gonna go ahead and click this button. Um, and again, this book had to be available at least for pre-order or for sale on the Kindle store before this would show up. Um, so that's a very important part. Now, the first thing ACX is going to ask us is, okay, do you want to have somebody go ahead and narrate your book for you and produce it? Or do you already have the files? Now, obviously, we already have the files. We went through Fiverr to find a great narrator. Um, we're not going through the ACX marketplace. So we are going to click, um, I already have audio files for this book and I want to sell it. Continue. And right. okay, does ACX know that that is my book? Is that why the button was there beside it? Or could anyone have tried to claim that book because it hadn't been claimed yet? 
Ooh, I'd love to answer that question. Mm -hmm. Yes, anybody can claim and people have done that before. But usually when someone has asserted for a title that's not theirs and ACX catches them, guess what happens to them? They get booted. What happens to the money that they earn? Well, it just kind of sits in limbo and Audible pretty much keeps your money at that point. And it kind of gives you, oh, we're sorry that happened. So Mm -hmm. yes, it does need to tighten up. There's many things than ACX. And that's one of the biggest beefs that I have that people can just claim whatever title that they want. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing I always do as a best practice. Once my book is available on pre-order, I will go and I will claim the audiobook. Now I would say almost all of my books have an audiobook. I have one book that doesn't yet. And I have gone and I've still asserted that title for that reason. It is sitting there as an in-production title under my name, even though I have no files, I have nothing to put in there just so somebody else cannot do that. So yes. Smart. Great question. Rob. Good answer. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to answer this as though I'm Rob, but I'm Rob's here. So it's okay that I'm answering for him. Okay. So Rob owns the worldwide rights to this title. Yes. Um, and we are going non-exclusive. So the whole point of this book is financial literacy for kids. Um, and so we want this book available to schools and libraries and guess who can't get into schools and libraries? Audible. So we are going to go non-exclusive. So we will still be available on the Amazon Audible marketplaces, but we're also going to go with Find Away Voices, which we'll upload to next. Um, so we're going to pick the non-exclusive option. And just to point out, I guess that means that the royalty amount is going down. So the amount I will make per sale is lower because I'm not doing exclusive rights to ACX, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. okay. Which is why... <laughs> I, I just love Amazon so much. They have such great policies for their creators. Yeah. It's, it's a good exchange though. I'll tell you, especially for kids books, because I've had a few kids books that went into the library and the sales far exceeded or the checkouts far exceeded what I was selling on ACX. So you're going in the right direction. I wholeheartedly endorse this. All right. Continue. Okay. All right. Now, Rob and I actually had a meeting yesterday where I pretty much went over what's in this agreement, a statement, um, effectively the payment terms, you know, not doing anything that's untoward um, or inappropriate on on the channel, on the platform, um, and pretty much agreeing that when you're saying you're not exclusive, you're not exclusive. If we were doing an exclusive contract, we would have gone into that more. So we're clicking agree because we've already gone over this. But for anybody watching, you should always read and review your agreements either by yourself or if you have somebody who you're working with to coach you through that, they should be able to speak to these so you understand it. But always read it yourself. You never know. Things change. Okay. Okay. Now the nice thing is because this is already linked in the Amazon ecosystem, the current book description has already pulled through. Now, this is the book description that's currently available on Amazon. Um, Rob, if you ever wanted to change that book description, you can change it once it goes live. So if you decide to optimize it every couple months, you can absolutely do that um, on both KDP and ACX. So that is good to know there. Okay. All right. Print copyright owner. That's Rob. Actually, I think... You used your full have to, name. Have to go by legal name. That was what you used in Bowker for your imprint. Oh. Okay. Yep. Okay. And we purchased the rights to the audio from Brad. Um, so that is why we are able to do that. Great. Okay. Nonfiction. Best category. I'm going to say children's audiobooks. That's that's the most correct category there. Um, now, there is a way to add additional categories once the book is up, which we'll continue to go over as the book gets closer to launch. Brad. How important is category section or category selection? Um, is it like something that you really want to nail or is it kind of like, oh, just pick something? You, you want to be pretty accurate on it for a few reasons. So A, it's going to help every time there is a sale. It's going to show up in each of the categories that are accurate for it. Now, we were very specific on your categories for KDP um, and in Ingram Spark as well. So what's nice is that when you get a print sale, that's going to help. As If somebody just goes to your listing on Amazon when all the formats are live, ebook, paperback, hardcover, audiobook, um, they're going to be able to see that. So maybe they find you because it's ranked well for ebook, but they say like, oh, there's an audiobook. My kids love audiobooks. I get so tired of reading the books. Cool. I'm going to buy that. Um, For the specific audiobook ranking, Audible doesn't have as many categories as Amazon proper. Um, So it isn't as drilled down as you can get on Amazon, but you still have a lot of options within ACX to be able to pick those categories. Yeah. So when you get ready to launch 
what you're going to want to do is there's actually a whole listing of all the categories that they have, and you're going to want to select at least another two. You're going to set it to support at acx.com. And while you're doing it, you're going to want to also make sure you get three good keywords related to your book. You're going to want to probably go to Audible and incognito mode and use the auto suggest to see what is going to pull up as far as the volume. Now, you're probably saying, what am I looking for? You're going to want to look for, of course, a relevant keyword that pertains to your audiobook, also something that doesn't have as much competition. And knowing what the competition is, you'll see what the search results are. So let's say there's eight children's audiobooks with squirrels in it or something like that. Um, that could probably be your keyword if it has, say, eight people there. But if you go over to another one and you see another keyword and has, say, 100 competitors, and it might be loosely relevant, then you may want to avoid that. But you get three categories and three keywords for the Audible platform. Just make sure that you submit that once this goes live on ACX, support at acx.com. Sorry, MK, hopefully I didn't speak over you on that one. Nope, that was perfect. Um, and that is one thing that is a little bit different between Findaway Voices and ACX that we're seeing here. When you want to add any extras, categories, even PDF extras, you have to email ACX, whereas with Findaway, it's all in their system, which is really nice. Okay. Reviews and awards. So I know we're working on getting some reviews and awards. I'm going to leave this blank for now, but you can come back and update this um, at any time. So this metadata here, you can update for reviews and awards, the description, et cetera. Um, that's kind of nice because you obviously want to keep getting reviews and awards beyond when it's published and you want to be able to update that. So we're not going to, we're going to leave that blank for now, um, but we are just going to click continue. Okay. So what's nice is that it's going to try to pull in the chapters from the ebook, which um, there's not really chapters in this book because it's a children's book, but this is a nice feature to have. I've used this for my own books. That was really nice. It pulled from the table of contents and just automatically pulled it in. I didn't have to do anything. In fact, it pulled in too much. Like it pulled in dedication um, and like actual table of contents. And I was like, those aren't going to be in the audio book, but it was nice to have it. Um, it doesn't really matter for the children's book. So we're just going to start entering names ourselves. Do, 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 do. So there is just M is for money. That's it. That's the chapter. It's one thing. Okay. So now here is where we upload all of our files. Um, so I'm, we're going to go ahead and upload the audiobook cover. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. So it has to be a JPEG, a PNG, or a TIF. Now, Rob, we have the actual book cover itself as a square, which is nice. Um, but then we have an audiobook version of it that's just audiobook on it. So I kind of like using that one because um, it says audiobook on it. Um, which one do you prefer? Yeah, let's do audiobook. Okay. Audiobook cover. It's almost like I planned for this or something. <laughs> Done it a couple times, I tell. I can tell. Image uh, resolution does not meet the requirement. <laughs> I wonder if that's because that one was modified in Canva. Let me just try the regular cover and see if that's fine. There we go. Okay. Let's do it. So the actual factual cover met the requirements versus the uh, audiobook added on. So. And I created that in Canva, so I might not have created the size, the file size to be big enough. Um, I might have been just like an Instagram thumbnail or something like that. So it might have mm. actually shrunk it down for that purpose. Okay. Okay. Well, at least we still have the full cover art, yep. so that's good. All right. We're going to hit save. So usually I do this step last when I'm uploading my audiobooks, and I'm always like, why can't I click that I'm done? And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. Sorry. Good. Help but laugh. Yeah. I relate. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So right now we're going to produce the audiobook. Now, everything we just entered is under about this title. So Rob, if you were to go and want to update the description, reviews, awards, et cetera, it would be under here. But right now we're going to produce the audiobook, which is really just uploading it. Okay. So we have opening credits, closing credits, re retail sample, and M is for money. Now, usually if this was a much longer book um, and it had chapters, we would have multiple chapters in here, but it's a short children's book. So we don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to start uploading the files that Brad produced for us um, and we'll get those going. So in a longer audiobook, would the audio files be broken up by chapter? Correct. There is a maximum length for these audio files. Um, I don't remember what it is, but it can't just be minutes. all one. 45 minutes. Thank you. 
So yeah, so this was actually one of the fastest uploads I've ever had um, doing this. Me too. (laughs) For a seven minute book. (laughs) There's only a few things. Um, So that's really nice to have. Now, one thing that uh, we did when we received all the files from the narrators is I actually ran it through um, the audio analysis on ACX to make sure it was correct. Um, That's why you'll notice this one says corrected on it. It was just a little bit off. So I was able to already fix that. Um, So that's why we're not seeing any bright red triangles showing up error. Um, Mm -hmm. If there were any issues that it detected as far as the um, RMS levels, so the volume levels, um, the bit rate, anything like that, super technical audio stuff, it would have showed up here and we would have been able to see it over on the audio analysis tab. But there's nothing on here because it was done correctly by a pro. Something to keep in mind that if uh, you don't have access to something like this or the audio engineer that you're working with doesn't have access to this, send them over to acx.com slash audio lab, and it'll do the same vetting system that you do for the audio analysis to make sure that passes. You'll save yourself a lot of time and heartache. I ran into the issue of uh, working with an audio engineer that never did audiobooks. And so we kept getting it rejected time and again. So Audio Lab, I gave him the link to that. He uploaded the track. So before he started sending me these tracks that were potentially not good, uh, he was able to run it through Audio Lab. So then I was not spending as much money having to volley this back and forth. Nothing that you, Robert, you, uh, Rob, that you're going to want to really know right at this point, but just in case you do need to circle back around, acx.com slash Audio Lab will help you out. No, and that even goes back to when we were vetting um, audiobook voiceovers, um, on Fiverr. Like we looked for people who had experience doing children's audiobooks. So maybe that was where we kind of struck gold unintentionally that we found somebody who was already familiar with the audiobook space, as opposed to just doing like voiceovers for advertisements or something like that. Yeah, Mm -hmm. absolutely. Absolutely. And that's where, when they said that they would be ACX compliant, that was part of it. Um, I will say that ACX standards do seem to be a bit more stringent. Um, Find a way voices has their own QA process, but for every time that I've had a book pass ACX, it has a hundred percent passed on find a way. So that's been really great. Um, So now we've done everything with everything is set to go. So we can click I'm done and we can submit this for review. However, (laughs) another great little catch about Amazon. So we can submit this. And right now, ACX is saying within 10 business days, so about two weeks, that it could have this reviewed and released. So because we're not exclusive with Amazon, we can't do a pre-order. So we can either submit it and just kind of hope that if it comes out, nobody notices or they just buy it directly and that's fine. Or we can wait until two weeks before your release date of November 13th to submit it. What would you like to do, Rob? Oh, let's just put it through. Come on, let's do it. (laughs) He's too excited. Don't hold this man back. (laughs) All right. All right. I think it's a good plan, Rob, to actually push it through because... Uh, it's Murphy's law. <laughs> if something can go wrong, it will go wrong because keep in mind, this has gone through their audio lab. Now it's going to go through human vetting processes. And there's been some times where my audiobooks have gone through and then they have manually rejected it because of certain artifacts, or maybe there wasn't enough um, a noise floor at the beginning and at mm-hmm. the end, things like that. So I think mm-hmm. it's a good idea. Will it be premature and coming out? Possibly. But rather than take take the chances, I think you're making the smart decision. Go ahead and launch it now. No one's going to penalize you if you you launch it sooner. No. And as we realize, even if people like go to Amazon and search Amazon for money, it's still not the top thing coming up. So like the chances of someone just stumbling across this are pretty low anyway. Yet. It's not the top thing yet. Yes. Yes, Yes, exactly. Okay. We haven't haven't tried yet. That's Yeah, exactly. Um, Okay. So Rob, you should actually have an email in your inbox from ACX saying, thank you. This has been submitted for review. XOXO audible. Okay. So that is good to go. So we'll be updated when it comes out of QA. Um, So if there is an issue, they will send back to what it is. Um, Sometimes they just say there's an issue. I usually write back and say, tell me exactly what's wrong. So I can fix it um, instead of making me guess. Um, but okay, so now we have everything submitted over on the ACX side. So we are going to get things uploaded to find a way. So my process is I always tackle Amazon first when I can um, because they, you're not exclusive with them, but they get a little touchy if they're not first. It's like, okay, okay, Amazon, um, which is not scientific or quantified in any way. It's just kind of accepted. Okay. So now we've switched over to find a way voices. This is what their dashboard looks like when you don't have an audiobook started yet. 
Um, it's a very quick little switch over, findawayvoices.com. Um, so they're going to help us go wide, which is awesome. All right. So we're going to start your first audiobook with Findaway. So again, you can sell an existing audiobook or create one with a narrator. We already have it created with a narrator. Um, so we're going to sell an existing audiobook. But um, if we wanted to go the route of finding the narrator through Findaway, we could have done that. Okay. Next. That is for money. Cool. All righty. Just noting that their requirements for file size was actually higher than ACX. They wanted 3,000 by 3,000 pixels. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Crazy, very right? High very high res <laughs> images. Yeah. Yeah. Which is interesting because like they actually work with Audible, Amazon, and Apple as well. Um, so just, okay. It's all good. Um, but we'll go over how to deselect those when we get to distribution. Um, so the first thing it asks for is title. This book doesn't have a subtitle, which is fine. Um, and it's not part of a series. So that was easy to do. Now, supplemental material, um, this is where we can add an extra. So this is where we talked about Rob, where if somebody buys the audiobook, you can say, hey, when you get the audiobook, you get. XYZ bonus item. So I'm going to go ahead and add one of the supplemental files that you had created with the Illustrator. Um, I think the word search would actually be pretty fun. Um, so let's go ahead and add that one. Sure. We have do, 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 do. printable word search. That's super fun. Cool. Smart idea, Rob. All righty. Okay. Or MK. I'm not sure which one of you guys came up with that idea. It's very smart. If Rob it's a came smart up idea, it probably was MK, but no, this one I can take credit for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Rob came up with all, all the extra ideas. So that was awesome. Okay. So the description, I'm going to be super scientific here and I'm literally just going to go to Amazon and I'm going to copy paste it. And again, Rob, anytime that you want to modify this, optimize it, et cetera, you can do that. Okay. Publisher. publisher. Robert Phelan. Okay. So if we're making though. a workflow for updating something like that, you would need to update it in Amazon. You'd have to go into ACX as well to update it, or will it pull the updated information from Amazon? I like to go in and update it specifically. Okay. And then also in Findaway Voice. So three different places it would have to be updated. Correct. So far. And Ingram Spark, since we also just uh, and Ingram Spark. So that's yes. just four. <laughs> that's just four. It's not crazy. Um, okay. So publisher. So again, this was in Valker when you set up your imprint was your full legal name. Um, I guess your first and last name. It's not your middle name. Um, so first and last name. Author, though, you have it listed as Rob Phelan. So I'm going to type this in. I have to click add. So under publisher, I don't have to click add. But for author and narrator, I do. So that's one thing that kind of trips people up when they're in find a way. You have to click add. OK, and this is Brad. I double checked the spelling, too, by the way, <laughs> when I grabbed it. So yeah, yeah. Okay. It's not a bridge. It is an English. Okay. So the keyword. So this is where we're going to be able to start to add these. Now we can Woo. get up to 956 characters. Um, so we know that this is an ABC's book. Okay. Add. Lead with your best keywords too, because uh, some of it's actually ends up being truncated, uh, meaning that some platforms won't utilize so many keywords. So you can load up those entire characters, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to reach all the platforms. So make sure you put your high quality keywords first in your list. Money book for kids, financial literacy for kids, um, financial literacy. Let's do ABCs of money. going down to nonfiction, um, the grade level. So it's ages three to eight. So that's going to be pre-K, but it's also K to three. Let's go with K to three. Yes. Okay. So this is going to be children. What does BISAC stand for? Yeah. So Book that is the standard uh, pff, dang it. <laughs> I had it for a second there. That's probably why they put a what's this button there for like people like me. It was like, I have no clue what that is. 
So this is um, this is a universal category code. So you, a lot of people are familiar with Amazon categories, but that is across all of their products on their website. So that's specific mm-hmm. to Amazon. So a BSAC code is an industry standard across all books. Um, so there's 56 different codes. Okay. I think that's right. Mm-hmm. We're going to, we'll double check. And if it's wrong, we'll just flash up the correct number. Um, there's 56 codes that can be applied across all books um, anywhere that they're published. So this is much more specific to books. It's called Book Industry Standards and Communications. That's what this act stands for. Boom. So here's where we're going to be entering in the ISBN information. So this is wanting to know your retail um, and your library ISBN. That's the same. Um, It's not going to be different. It's going to be the same exact thing that's going out to both. Um, So we're going to go ahead and enter that in. I've pulled up your Balker account. And just again, for the beginners like me, this is not the ESPN or ISBN that's on your book. This is a unique ISBN for the audiobook, right? Correct. So your ISBN is specific to the book format. Use my own. Thank you. Um, so it's specific to the format. So even for the ebook and the print and both print versions, those are different. So for the print, does it matter which one you take? No, either one. It just wants to make sure it associates them acro- appropriately across different vendors. So now when it sends out to Nook Audio, it's going to see that you have distribution through Ingram Spark to Barnes & Noble. And it's going to say, oh, Barnes & Noble has this ISBN for the print, this one for the ebook, this Nook Audio link needs to be associated. Cool. Cool. Okay. This audiobook has never been available for purchase before. Correct. Okay. So there's the street date and the release date. So both of these are going to be your release date. Just annoying. Minor autobook will not be available. To you. Cool. And so it's that's not saying- going to throw up any flags if ACX releases our book sooner, right? No, okay. they know. They know. They've they've had to work with uh with ACX. They know. Okay, so 2021 is the source year. Copyright owner is. Okay. So they offer to set the price. Now, this is something we didn't go over in ACX because you notice ACX did not ask us what price you wanted to charge for the audiobook. They don't care what you want to do it. They don't care. (laughs) They don't. don't. So they set the price for your book on Audible. And one thing I did share with um, Rob yesterday is that they tend to make the just buy the audiobook price really high. And then it's, oh, but you get it for free when you get your Audible membership, um, which is a, va- a valid sales tactic that they're using. Um, but Amazon does price match. Um, so what I usually do is I actually like using the find a way voices suggested pricing because obviously find a way doesn't make anything off the book unless you make something off the book. Um, so I like to use their suggested pricing because they're looking at sales of children's audiobooks, juvenile audiobooks um, in the topics that we selected and saying, hey, this is generally what the the sweet spot is for sales. And the nice thing is that Amazon should see this and they should price match to it. Cool. Let's go ahead and do 415 is kind of an odd price though. Let's go with it. And then you can amend this at any time. And you can also offer limited time discounts. So say through Find Away Voices, you say, hey, any of the retailers they go out to, I want to say for the month of April, which is financial literacy month, I want the audiobook to be available for $2.99. You can set that for that entire duration of that month. If you get any special deals and promotions, which I think we're going to talk about in the next video, you can go in here and modify the price at, at any time. So that's really nice about Find Away is you have that control. And then when we spoke, we spoke separately about the ebook, and I realized that Amazon was charging a base fee based on the size of the file. And as a children's picture book, it was a very large file. So mm-hmm. we actually have to set the ebook price higher. Is it similar for an audiobook in that, like, because mine is so short, it's going to have a very small base price because the files are smaller? Yes. So it's taking up less. There's, it has to pay less rent on the server effectively. So yes. Got that. Um, also, it just has less content, right? So if I'm a consumer and I have my Audible credits to use each month and I say, hmm, I could get War and Peace or I can get some other doorstopper of a book for one credit or I can get this children's book that's eight minutes for one credit. Um, so I think the, the price reflects the length, but it also should reflect the amount of space that it's not taking up. That cool. makes sense. 
Yeah. Um, okay. And then you notice the library price is more expensive. Now, this is not because we are sticking it to libraries. We love libraries. Libraries are great. Um, way to Stick get Stick it to the man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what this is, is that a library is given a license by you, the author, to distribute the book, right? So this is kind of thinking about, say you're having a block party, uh, it's back in the 90s. The Lion King just came out and somebody's like, hey, I'm going to show the Lion King to all these neighborhood kids. They love it. And I'll charge a dollar a pop and that, that'll cover the popcorn I'm going to make for the kids. Mm -mm, you can't do that. Disney did not give you the right to go and license their their movie, Mr. Man. Um, and so that's something that you are giving to the libraries, right? You are saying, hey, you can go and you pay me this one larger fee, but you can give it to any number of patrons this year that you would like to. Or they can pay a much smaller fee just for a one-time rental. Um, and so you'll notice when you start to see the um, royalties come in from Find Away Voices, someone to be like, why is that so low? But that's because it was a per use. So you actually come out better when libraries do per use. So eventually, if it keeps getting rented, they'll be like, I'm just going to pay for the year-long license for this thing. This is... This is hurting. Per use would reflect more like a music contract where like a, an artist would get paid per play of their song on something like Spotify. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, Typically derived from some type of like a global pool of money, uh, much in the same way that like, say, Kindle Unlimited functions. And if you have your ebook through KDP Select, you have your book put into library distribution through almost like a subscription based type service. And you're pulling from a big global pool. Uh, there's actually three different ways that libraries actually function. But uh, those are one of two ways, uh, outright buying it, and then, of course, the per checkout and then the global publication pool. Yep. Yep. Cool. All right. So the next thing on here is the launch pricing. We haven't discussed doing a different audiobook price prior to launch. Um, is that something you'd want to do? So the launch day pricing, they're suggesting something higher or lower or what would, you, what would you suggest there? What are they thinking? So I always like to say, if you're going to offer a different price during pre-order, it should be lower. The people who are pre-ordering, they're your super fans. They're your early adopters. You do not want them to suddenly find out like, wait, I paid more for this if I had just waited. Because what, what they're going to do next time is they're going to wait and wait and wait, and they're not going to buy anything. Okay. So, so I always like to say, if you're going to do a pre-order pricing, it's lower than the retail price. Okay. So if we are doing launch pricing, this is the pre-order price, not the post-launch mm -hmm. day pricing. Correct. Um, sure. Let's try it out. Let's see what it looks like. Okay. So let's do, maybe we'll do $3.99. So it's lower. <laughs> Incentives. 16 <laughs> cents. 16 cents. <laughs> we yeah. can make it even lower. Uh, okay. And obviously the 12th, the day before it launches is when this will end. Do you want to go down to like just a full dollar off? Sure. So do we have any idea like what is the minimum I could charge for this before I would start losing money on it? Does um like find away voices give us an indication what that is like what is that rental fee to host it like is there is there a floor to how low this can go? I'm not seeing that. On I've here. never thought about that before. Good question. I don't think many people ask like what's the least I can charge for my product, but just curious. Like no, um, especially when we... we talked about it with the ebook, um, my thought was like oh I want to launch it like first day for like ninety nine cents and get as many reviews as possible that way, but realizing that if I did that, I would actually lose money per sale because Amazon is going to charge me this baseline fee for hosting the book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. So while you're explaining that, I kind of just typed in 99 cents and I'm not getting anything red saying that I yeah. can't. And 99 cents is generally the lowest you would want to go. Yeah. I guess we could do it for a cent and see what happens. Um, yeah. I'll or, reach or out to Will Degas and I'll um, get an answer. I like to get a dollar off. I think that's a a nice price. A dollar off is good. Okay. A buck for sure. It's already cheap as it is, uh, yeah. or inexpensive is the, what I should yes. say. Yes. Good value. Good value. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and hit save on everything that we just did. I should have been saving all along. Good thing. Good thing we didn't lose it. Okay. Da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. Okay. Are you mad at me? Change was saved. We have changes. Okay, so now we're going to go over to distribution. Okay, so we're going to do the standard distribution. Voices Plus is um, a subscription service you can sign up for that gets you some additional benefits and perks. Um, I would say if you're going to be doing a lot of audiobooks, probably make more sense. Um, this is the first one. You can always upgrade to this later. This isn't like a speak now or hold your peace on this option. So 
We're going to do standard. Okay. So distribution network, this is everywhere that Findaway Voices gets you to. Now, as you can see, even within the first line, we have Apple, we have Audible. Hmm. We already have distribution to them. So what we need to do is go all the way down here to edit this distribution network. And we're going to take off Audible and Amazon. Now we're not taking off Apple because you can still distribute to Apple through Findaway, even though ACX is going to try to get you there. So we're going to submit this to Findaway now, and they're going to say, nope, Apple's already approved on this end. So your Findaway listing with Apple is going to supersede anything that ACX would do, and you will actually make more on your Apple audiobook sales than you would necessarily through ACX. So that is one nice thing. You do not have to uncheck Apple, um, but because we are going with ACX, we do have to uncheck Audible and Amazon. We don't want to get duplicate listings. Yeah, fun fact, okay. Apple considers Findaway Voices to be a preferred partner. When I asked them, what did they think about ACX? They said, they're not a preferred partner. <laughs> Apparently, Apple sees Amazon as, uh, as a threat. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we've updated our distribution. So that's the main thing to, to keep in mind. Now, if we weren't going with ACX at all, we would not have to update this or edit it. Um, and there are several countries around the world where authors cannot access ACX. And this is their best way using Findaway to get their book onto Audible and Amazon. But because we can go with them direct, we're going to go direct. Okay. Now we actually get to upload our audio. Yay. Okay. And again, this should take no time at all. So opening credits. I love how it's mentioned chapter one. <laughs> chapter one. Just is Emma's for money. Now that is actually going to pull in from the title on the file. So we don't want that. That's not what that is. So we're just going to say M is for money. Boom. Done. So we named the chapter in ACX. That was our one that we added. So that's what I already showed. Um, if I had just let the, the file upload, it would have done the same thing in ACX, but I had already named the chapter when we added that. Yeah, closing credits. Boom. And our retail sample. Now, the retail sample is required for all platforms, um, maximum of five minutes, a minimum of one minute. So that's just so people can try it before they buy it. Okay. All right. So we have our metadata, our distribution, and our audio is set. So at this point, we can go ahead and submit this for review. Um, I will say the QA process for Findaway is at warp speed compared <laughs> to ACX. It's amazing. Love me some Findaway voices for yeah. that reason alone. Yeah. All right. So we're going to go ahead and submit. Good to go. Boom. This is how your audio files will appear. Perfect. That's what we like. Looks great. Confirm. Continue to final review. They really want to make sure you are set on your audio, which is very good. You'll find two emails in your inbox, Rob. Okay. And yeah, they're just confirming. Okay. Yeah, they're just going to confirm that it's all been submitted and she hit publish. Congrats. Yeah. Wow. And this it, is fun. Yeah. Yeah. And it is good that they offer so many chances to be like, are you sure? Are you sure you're sure? Um, because when you do go in to submit any changes, you do have to kind of re-publish uh, your metadata. Um, and it's not great to do that. I mean, it's not going to be instantaneous. It takes time. And that's one thing I always try to advise any authors is that when you're updating the description, again, across those four places, it's not all going to hit at the same time across all of them. Um, so it's just little things just to keep in mind. It's nice to have it all locked in. Cool. There we Sweet. go. I guess we cool. are done. So uh, and now you'll yep. see this in progress pending QC review, which is quality control. Love it. All Got right. an audiobook. All right. We did it. We yes. Did it. Yay. That's going to probably like, they'll have that available. I, I almost guarantee within the next day or two. And then probably over the next week or two, you're going to start to see it populate. Google Play, I've always found is like the first to pick up a pre order and put it out there. So look to Google Play first. They won't have all of your links probably for another few weeks. It's going to start to populate inside your Find Away Voices account. But congrats, Rob. You officially you so published much, your guys. first audiobook. And now you too can purchase this audiobook. I have the links below for where you can check out the book M is for Money, and you can also request it from your library, which was a big priority for us in this process. So what questions do you have about self-publishing your audiobooks? Let me know in the comments below. 
And if you have questions on how to promote and get reviews, well, stay tuned. The next video on that exact topic is coming out on self-publishing with Dale. So be sure to subscribe to Dale's channel so you can see how we help Rob do just that. And for more on Rob's publishing journey through illustration, crowdfunding, offset printing, etc., be sure to subscribe to this channel. There's going to be many more videos coming on those topics. All right, now you can get back to writing your book. Hey, if you want to continue to support this channel and my other creative work, please head over to buymeacoffee.com and support my channel. You can buy me one coffee, three, five, ten, or you can even get a membership. Those who are in the membership are actually going to be included in the acknowledgments pages of all of my published books moving forward as a big thank you. And you can even get some additional options to get an Instagram thank you post shout out or a shout out in an upcoming video. Thank you so much for supporting this channel.